So this is our, this is hopefully one of the more fun and interesting parts of the class. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of present to you a case. And the goal here is to um, just get a flavor of the complexity and confusion and the panic that can happen in a really bad and confusing clinical situation and, and see the kinds of challenges that uh, engineers might be able to help with by bringing a little order to the, to the chaos. And so on day one, I'll, I'll give you the sort of chief complaint, initial presentation of the patient. And, and, and what you guys will, you'll, you'll, you know, these are, these are interesting cases, complex cases, which the physicians involved couldn't figure out. So you're not going to figure them out, okay? The, the goal is to just help you think about it, think about possibilities, make what we call a differential diagnosis. What, what, what are the main categories of things you think might be going on? And then think about the kind of tests that either exist or that you'd like to build that would help bring uh, a light to the, to the question, okay? So no, no pressure. It's more an exercise in, in thinking how, how you can get uh, uh, toward the, the right answer. Okay, so chief complaint. A 26-year-old woman she comes in. She's admitted for headache, inability to communicate, behavioral changes, and abnormal movements. Pretty complicated right away. That's not a typical presentation on the neurology or psychiatry service where you get these very vague, non-quantitative, but very debilitating problems. History of the present illness. How did this happen? Seven weeks ago, diffuse headache, especially in the occipital area. Neck stiffness, sound sensitivity, blurred vision, nausea, vomiting. She had a history of migraine. She took her migraine meds. It didn't help. Six weeks ago, getting more complex, dysphoria, that's like depression, that's feeling bad. Uh, sleepiness, short-term memory problems, confusion, agitation, and depersonalization. This is feeling like you're not really real, something that happens in schizophrenia all the time. There's no lab test for it, the patient just reports that. Okay, what does it mean? Five weeks ago, getting worse. Much worse. Okay, worsening confusion, uh, transfer to the psychiatry service. Okay, that's where we sit now. What's her history? Well, history of migraine, obesity, some allergies, some drug use. Okay, maybe that's relevant. Cigarette smoker, history of cocaine, amphetamine, ecstasy, and salvia. Do the norm. Uh, some travel history. Okay. Yeah, she had a, <laughs> that was a good party. I, I want to invite. Um, some exposures. The things, insecticides, okay, this could be relevant. Okay, family history, okay, some autoimmune stuff, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis, okay, uh, hepatitis, that's interesting. History of aneurysm, history of epilepsy in the family. All right, no pressure. What do you think <laughs> is the basic category? These are big categories. What do you think is the primary cause of this patient? Do you think it's drugs? Do you think it's stroke? Do you think it's schizophrenia? Do you think it's infection? Do you think it's epilepsy? Do you think it's cancer? Do you think it's multiple sclerosis? And remember, the, the, I'll tell you, the docs involved got this completely wrong, so. Not. Uh, those drugs. <coughs> What we got? Yeah, let's try this. <laughs> Nobody thinks it's people think MS. Okay, all right. 
So let's. All right. So I'm going to do one more bit. Uh, we'll wrap up in about four minutes. But we got a little more information before you get to the next step. Do it in an exam, physical and mental status exam. Okay. Okay. So talking to her, and this was rapidly changing. So it progressed over three days. Her speech became garbled and incoherent. She started to hyperextend her arms. What's that about? Unresponsive to verbal stimuli. Pupils became sluggish, sluggish reactive, but equal. They were the same size. Okay, so there's not an asymmetrical thing going on. All kinds of medications tried, nothing helped. Okay, pain medications, anti-inflammatories, opiates. This is a migraine med. Nothing worked. Psychiatry meds, B2 blockers, anti-anxiety, anti-epileptics. Nothing helped. Hospital course, worse and worse. Oromotor mouth dyskinesias, uh, continuous movements of head and neck, stop speaking, mouth nonsense when prompted, fever, tonic-clonic seizure, that's a generalized seizure involving the whole body, heart rate slowed down to 30 to 39 beats per minute, intubated, never liked to see this, became unresponsive to all stimuli, pinpoint but equal pupils, no focal or lateralizing signs. Okay, let's revote. same question. Okay, nobody thinks it's now drugs. Okay, that's the main change. Um, a lot of people still liking multiple sclerosis, and a lot of people thinking about infection now. That's interesting. Adjusting, noting anti-epilepsy drugs didn't work. Cancer now lower. This is pretty rapidly progressive, so you're kind of big calls there. Okay, and so now, last thing before you go, uh, the concept of the differential diagnosis. If you've seen a uh, house or ER, this is the kind of thing people talk about. For delirium or central nervous system dysfunction, it can be so complex that it can, helps to have a mnemonic. And a lot of docs actually use these to make sure they don't forget a major category of thing that could be going on. I watch death is used a lot in the ICU for delirium or central nervous system dysfunction. I stands for infection, all those causes. Withdrawal, all the drug withdrawals. A for acute metabolic changes, acid base shifts, uh, failure in some of the organs that help you clear and detoxify your blood. Trauma, okay, there could be something uh, subtle going on that was due to an injury that we don't know about. Other intra, intra central nervous system pathology. A lot of other things start from outside and affect the brain, but what about things starting in the CNS? abscesses, bleeds or hemorrhages, uh, infection, seizure, stroke, tumor, inflammation or vasculitis, inflammation of the vessels, encephalitis, inflammation of the brain overall, meningitis, inflammation of the meninges, which are the lining of the brain, syphilis, a long-acting uh, infectious process, hypoxia, impaired oxygen, all those causes. Deficiencies, you get crazy stuff from vitamin deficiencies in the brain. Endocrine changes, thyroid, glucose, all kinds of, of, of things relating to that. Acute vascular things, a stroke and shock, not enough or too much blood pressure. Toxins, drugs, pesticides, solvents. Heavy metals kind of falling in that category, but helping you make the acronym work out. Okay. But you can't just test for everything. You have to kind of have some logic. You have to sequence things. Everything costs something. Everything takes time. And so you have to go with your best guess, what's most likely, and what test could we do that would help maximally in, in separating out the space of possibility. So that's kind of one of the most exciting and interesting aspects. You don't have the right tools for the brain, crude tools, but you have to differentiate somehow. <laughs>